is what happens to the body when HIV drugs are stopped for millions of people. A generation has passed since the world saw the peak in AIDS-related deaths. Those deaths, agonizing, from diseases or infections the body might otherwise fight off, sent loved ones into the streets, pressuring governments to act. The United States eventually did, creating PEPFAR, arguably the most successful foreign aid program in history. HIV, which causes AIDS, is now manageable, though there is still no cure. Now the Trump administration has put the brakes on foreign aid while alleging it's wasteful, causing chaos in the system that for over 20 years has kept millions of people alive. Confusion over a temporary waiver for PEPFAR, and the difficulty of restarting its work. With U.S. workers, contractors, and payments in upheaval, means the clock is ticking for many who are suddenly unable to obtain medications to keep AIDS at bay. The U.S.-led global response to HIV has been so effective that AIDS wards of people wasting away are a vision of the past. Now health experts, patients, and others fear those days could return if the Trump administration doesn't reverse course or no other global power steps into the void, and fast. In the next five years, we could have 6.3 million AIDS-related deaths, the UN AIDS Agency told the Associated Press. That's a shock at a time of rising complacency around HIV declining condom use among some young people and the rise of a medication that some believe could end AIDS for good. The agency has begun publicly tracking new HIV infections since the AIDS freeze. Here's a look at what happens to the body when HIV drugs are stopped and immune system collapse. The agency has begun publicly tracking new HIV infections since the AIDS freeze. Here's a look at what happens to the body when HIV drugs are stopped an immune system collapse, HIV is spread by bodily fluids such as blood, breast milk, or semen. It gradually weakens the body's immune system and makes it vulnerable to disease, including ones rarely seen in otherwise healthy people. The surprising emergence of such cases in the 1980s is what tipped off health experts to what became known as the AIDS epidemic, years of intense advocacy and shocking sights of children young adults, and others dying of pneumonia and other infections led to the response that created PEPFAR, the president's emergency plan for AIDS relief. 20 million people around the world died before the program was founded. Now millions of people take drugs known as antiretrovirals that keep HIV from spreading in the body. Stopping those drugs lets the virus start multiplying in the body again, and it could become drug-resistant. HIV can rebound to detectable levels in people's blood in just a few weeks, putting sexual partners at risk. Babies born to mothers with HIV can escape infection only if the woman was properly treated during pregnancy or the infant is treated immediately after birth. If the drugs are not taken, a body is heading toward AIDS, the final stage of infection, the daily danger of germs, without HIV treatment. People with AIDS typically survive about three years, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says, for a long time, there may be no noticeable symptoms. But a person can easily spread HIV to others, and the immune system becomes vulnerable to what are called opportunistic diseases. The National Institutes of Health says opportunistic diseases include fungal infections, pneumonia, salmonella, and tuberculosis. For a country like South Africa, with the world's highest number of HIV cases and one of the largest numbers of TB cases, the toll could be immense. 